Girl, come close. We got a lot to talk about because this episode, <laughs> baby, this episode was crazy on so many levels. I feel like we've got little teams going on in the house. Like we got Team Pressure and Liddy on this corner of the house. And then over here, you know, we got Cashmere and Knuckles and uh, Monet and them over here. And then, you know, over here we got Ivory and uh, uh, Lolly and, oh, uh, Hillbilly Barbie. All them over. It's just a hot mess. And it's a lot going on in the South Central Baddies house. If you watch South Central Baddies, if you enjoy the show, you come to the right place. Because we are about to break the episode down. We're about to talk about it all, baby. Make sure you get subscribed to the channel if you're not subscribed yet. Also, like this video by clicking the thumbs up button. That helps me get into the algorithm so more people like your beautiful self can find me here. If you want to join the conversation, go ahead and get in that comment section and let me know what you thought about the episode. I want to know whose team y'all are on, whose side y'all are on, what squad you repping for. Also, let me know whose side are you on when it comes to Cashmere versus Billy Barbie. Hillbilly Barbie is what I like to call her because she acting like one of these motherfucking hillbillies around this motherfucker. Okay? Last but not least, if you want to support the Damien After Dark movement, you can donate to the channel by clicking the description box below and using payment applications like PayPal, Cash App, Venmo, and Zelle. I will also post my Amazon wish list there for those that choose to take that route. Thank you all for the donations and the love, okay? Let's get into this episode. Y'all know how we do over here when it comes to me recapping shit. I start at the top and I work my way down. So I know a lot of y'all, a lot of y'all be wanting me to jump right into the mess, getting into the meat of the matter. But a lot, I, I talk to a lot of people who like the, 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 they like me to, they like my style of how I recap. They like me going through the entire episode and bringing up little things. So we're just going to stick with that. So we're picking up off of last week where Lolly is upset that if y'all remember correctly, Liddy snuck in their room through the window and she poured juice all over their clothes. She poured flour all over their shit. She took their stuff out of suitcases, threw it everywhere. The only thing I could think about this entire episode, y'all, was how they were tearing up these poor people's Airbnb. Could y'all imagine if this was your house and you like you turn on South Central Baddies and you see, you're like, oh shit. Wait, they're the ones that rented from me? Wait, they're fucking my house? Could you, bitch, I would be charging that motherfucking credit card so hard. The, that house is trashed. That house is trashed. Now, Ivory is upset at Liddy at this point because Liddy, you know, in the process of pouring shit all over people's clothes, she did it to Ivory's clothes. Now, I don't know whether it was intentional to fuck Ivory's clothes up. I don't know if Liddy had a, one particular target she was going after and she just, you know, people got people got um, fucked up in the mix. You know, they were collateral damage. I don't know. Um, but at this moment, we hear Ivory making colorist comments. They like, I don't like calling, um, she loves, they love to call Liddy a black bee and things like that, that I just don't like. And it, I, it, when people say that, it makes you look like you think that you being light skinned is the beauty standard. When you say that, it makes you look like you think you're superior because you're light skinned. It has nothing to do with you're reading a bitch or you're just mad and you're trying to, you know, go after somebody. Like at this point, it's gone to a whole other level of you thinking because her skin is darker than yours. That she's not worthy. She's not pretty. And I just don't like it. Never liked it. Um, now, I understand Lolly and Ivory being upset at what Liddy did to their room, right? Completely understand. Because did y'all see their room? Like, their room was a fucking mess. Like, I feel like it didn't have to go that far, Liddy. Like, y'all want to pounce on each other all day long, fight from sun up to sundown? Go at it. But the moment you touch someone's stuff, then we're crossing the line into another zone because now they're going to think, okay, you fuck with my stuff and I for an eye, I'm fucking with your stuff. And then it's just a never ending battle, right? So I just think Liddy shouldn't have done that. At this point, Lolly's so upset that she's crying um, over what happened 
while Liddy and Pressure, they're in the room on the bed, laying there, just chilling. And Lolly, I, Lolly in there crying, which I understand. I get it, Lolly. I'm not giving her hell because she's, I think, if, if Lolly is like me, sometimes when I get so upset, I can't help it. You know, you just cry. You get somebody that you cry. So I think that's what she's going through at this moment. And rightfully so. You know, you're fucking with my belongings, my personal belongings that I worked hard for, bitch. Like, no. Now, Fly, Fly Knight and Lolly are telling Isaiah that they need to send Liddy home at this point because of the fact that she took the screen out of the window. Now, if you if, if you if you let Lolly tell it, okay, if you let Lolly tell it, she'll tell you. I'm sorry, y'all. My nose is running. I'm still a little sick from last month. My nose is still sniffly, but I need to get my tissue. Um, if you let Lolly tell it, she'll tell you that. Liddy broke the window. So you think it shattered glass. You know what I'm saying? Liddy took the screen out of the window. Pulled the window up. Whatever. You know, we've all done it when we've locked ourselves out of the house. You know what I'm saying? Um, is it right? No. I feel like Liddy did kind of cross the line there too. Because it's like, y'all stop fucking up these people's house. Like, y'all have already trashed this place. Leave these people shit alone. You know what I'm saying? Like, leave these people shit alone. But I do want to say, I want to talk about Cash in that blonde wig. Because, baby, Cash in that blonde wig, she be giving. And I got to give it to her. I got to give it to her. She looks like two different people when she's in that blonde wig versus when she got that, um, when she got whatever else. She be, Sometimes she be, I think it's the wig cap. And then her braids, because bless her heart, her hairline start back here. And it's no shade, Cash. You know, I got a receding hairline, too. You know, I get it from my father. I'm not tripping i'm not judging her but my thing is sis yo hey it's very receding <laughs> bless her heart that ain't that's a i wouldn't call that a receding hairline. i would call that a running hairline because that bitch is running away from her um but when she's done up tears across the board she looks good she looks pretty um now, Lolly decides to try to get her get back, right? She wants to get her get back on Liddy for fucking her shit up. So what does she do? She goes and gets their stuff and puts it in the shower and turns the shower on and leaves the shower running. I'm just like, that's your get back, sis? See, you wasn't mad enough. You, wouldn't, you wasn't mad enough, uh, Lolly, because if you really wanted to get them hoes back, and I love Lily, uh, Liddy and Pressure. I don't I don't mean hoes like that. Like, I mean hoes like, you know, y'all know. Y'all know me shit. If you really wanted to get them girls back, all you see, this, this goes to show that, that Lolly didn't watch Bad Girls Club. <laughs> she didn't watch the blueprint before she came into the off the off brand before she came into the you know the the knockoff version of a bad girls club because if you watched bad girls club lolly you would know in situations like this we're gonna pull a season five Kristen kelly chemical motherfucking warfare up in this bitch i'm pouring clorox bleach all over this shit bitch you ain't wearing this shit ever again ho <laughs> never Okay, because what is you, Lolly, what is you putting it in the shower doing? I'm sorry, but you just washed my clothes for me without detergent. Like, please, miss me with that. And then Lolly thought she ate. Is she in the confessional? She's sitting up in the confessional talking about. So I had to go get their clothes. And, you know, I put their clothes in the in the motherfucking, uh, uh, in the shower, bitch. And I cut the motherfucking water on. And then I went back. Right out the window. I didn't even let, didn't even know I came in there and did like just like girl. It's not giving what you think it's giving, sis. And, I, and for those that don't know, and they didn't watch the episode, I'm putting the shades on because she was wearing shades just like exactly like these in her confessional. Taught me, you know, acting like she ate it up when she put the clothes in the shower. Like, bitch, you you washed my clothes for me. Thank you. Thank you. Shit, I think I need to keep these on. The way these bright ass motherfucking I got two ring lights and they bright as fuck. Now Monet and Pressure. Monet and Pressure, they're pissed because 
they go into the, the bathroom in the shower and they find their stuff in the shower, you know, soaked because the shower's running and it's going on their suitcase. It's going on their stuff. And, you know, they're so pissed at this point, which I don't blame them because Li Liddy touched y'all shit. Don't touch my shit. Like, I understand their collateral damage, but I also understand that them being upset because it's like, you know, don't touch my motherfucking shit. But that's the thing that made me think this episode. These girls must be sharing rooms because ain't no way my shit would be out with another girl's stuff if we had separate rooms. My shit gonna be put up. So multiple girls' belongings are being vandalized or whatever because they're sharing rooms. That's all the only thing I can assume because I don't think there's enough rooms in that house for every single girl. And it looked like Isaiah and them stay in there too. Um... Random note, but I really like Monet. I don't know what it is about Monet. I think she's really pretty. And I like her personality a lot. She reminds me a lot of myself. I like Monet so far. She's one of my one of my faves. Monet and Pressure are my faves, I think. Now, Isaiah says that Lolly thought the clothes were Liddy's. But they weren't, so it was a mistake. So, Lolly made a mistake. And she put the wrong girl's clothes in the washer. Not not that they were sharing rooms. I'm sorry, y'all. They weren't... Sh when it com Now, when it comes to the other girls, I think they were when it comes to um, Lolly and them. I don't know. I don't know. Y'all answer for me. Are they sharing rooms? Anyway. So, Lolly made a mistake, but anyway. I, I Listen, I couldn't be on this show. I don't know about y'all. They don't pay enough to be on these types of shows because we fight all motherfucking day. Your personal belongings and your property gets vandalized. Girls are over here barricading th themselves in their rooms with their stuff because they don't want their shit to get, you know, touched. I'm <laughs> Clout is one hell of a drug. Now, the girls are going to go out to the club. And I'm, you know me. I'm over here thinking, oh my God, finally, something different. They can get out of the house and stop fucking fighting for once. But they get to the club, and girls ain't even got their ID. Cash ain't got her ID. Which, I'm going to be real with y'all. I can't really say much because I don't have my ID right now. But listen, 95% of the time, I've got my ID. My, I had a Mark Jacobs, um, I had a Mark Jacobs tote bag about this size. Um, which this isn't Mark Jacobs, unfortunately, but it's okay. It'll do. It's cute, right? Um, I had a Mark Jacobs bag about that size, and unfortunately, someone stole it. And y'all, when I tell you my passport was in there, my social security card was in there, I had two driver's license in there, I had um, cash in there, I had weed in there. You talk about piss, which I learned a lesson, don't carry. People are like, why don't you, why don't you got your passport and your social and stuff in your bag? I've just always done that because I've always kept up on my shit. I've never lost it. My bag goes with me everywhere, bitch. You see me, I got this bag, okay? Um, And I never thought in a million years somebody would steal it out of my own yard, but I left, and, and I think it was my, it was the fucking handyman. The handyman stole the motherfucker. And I, I just, it's a long story. I know for sure he did because the handyman was giving dope head vibes, if you know what I'm saying? So anyway, anyway. So the girls go out to the club, they ain't got their ID, Cash ain't got her ID, and I'm just like, girls, why ain't y'all got y'all's ID? Unless it's a situation like mine. Maybe like, maybe theirs got stole too. But I got a feeling that a lot of these girls just aren't that responsible. and just don't fucking have IDs for whatever reason. And I'm like, Lolly, I mean, you gotta have an ID damn near for everything. How do y'all do what y'all gotta do? Get on flights. Buy alcohol. You know? Um... No, so the girls get back in the Sprinter and Isaiah tells the girls that Pressure and Liddy are back at the house trying to get in their room. And I'm like, oh, Isaiah, you being so messy. You stirred that motherfucking pie up, boy. Um, so, you know, obviously the girls are pissed and they're like, oh, I want to get home. And Billy Barbie, Hill Billy Barbie says, if my shit is touched, I'm whooping their ass. I'm whooping their ass if my shit is touched. And then Isaiah says, if they did touch your stuff, they have to go. So I'm like, okay, well, let's see if 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 he's going to stand on business and send them home, which we see he doesn't because Lydia and Pressure did, in fact, touch their stuff. We see that, you know, when they get back, um, 
home, we see footage of Liddy in their bedroom looking through a drawer. You know, she was looking through a drawer at one point, like going through it. And I'm just like, Liddy, why are you going through people's shit? And I love Liddy. I love Liddy and Pressure both, but I look at Liddy differently now when I see this because, like, why are you going through people's shit? Like, I get it. You're mad. And it's one thing. It's one thing to pour juice on people's shit, pour flour on people, whatever. You know, do your bad girls club shit. I get that, right? It's one thing to do that. But not only was she just going through the drawer. Well, not only just that, before I get to that. I don't like when people will be going through, like, because it gives me the vibe, Liddy, that you were going through her shit looking for something. I don't know. Were you trying, were you going to take some shit? What were you doing, sis? You know what I'm saying? Y'all get what I'm saying there? Like, don't come in my room looking through my personal belongings. I don't like that. And I get she's the ops, but we got to have some motherfucking boundaries here. Um, And then not only did she go through the drawer, she put <laughs> chili powder. She put motherfucking chili powder in Lolly's juice, right? Lolly gets back from the club and she thirsty. She dehydrated, bitch, because she been drinking, right? So she gets ready to turn that juice up. She gets ready to turn that juice up the way I just turned this water up. And she said, oh my God, my mouth's on fire. They're trying to poison me. They put something in my drink. My motherfucking mouth is on fire, right? I'm just like, oh my God, Lolly, you big dummy. Why would you not, like, if I hadn't thought somebody had been in my room and I got a big jug of juice right there that I'm fixing a swig, that's going to be one of the first things I check. Like, it's going to be like this. I'm going to be looking at that shit, like, y'all know, y'all, you know what I'm saying. Y'all know exactly what I'm saying. Now, Pressure, y'all know Pressure is my confessional queen of the season. Pressure keeps me laughing all fucking season. I love her confessional. She's so funny. I love when she talks like this. And I love when she does this. It gives me all my life, okay? And, bitch, she had me screaming, okay? She said, the water in the suitcase, that was cute. That was cute. That's real cute. But that chili powder and that juice, that was cute. Now, I want you to drink some of that Pressure Potion, Drink some of that pressure potion, bitch. <laughs> I don't know why in the moment when I watched it for the first time. Oh my God, I laughed so hard. The way she said it. Not the pressure potion, bitch. Not the motherfucking pressure potion. Two ingredients. Two ingredients to the pressure potion. Minute Maid juice of your choice. And chili powder. I'm sorry, but pressure, uh, pressure and Liddy win. They won. They won. The chili powder, bitch. Whole time. Whole time, Lolly, dramatic ass, thinks they have poisoned her. Girl, you ain't that special now. You ain't that special to go to prison over. Now, shit. Um, so, now, Liddy, off camera, cameras are not filming her, but apparently she goes to get her vape downstairs, right? From security. Apparently security had her vape. And when she tries to get her vape from security, Fly Nye comes around the corner and <laughs> spits on her. Spits on I mean, y'all are just trifling. Trifling, okay? And then the gag of it all, bitch. The gag of all gags about that. Did y'all see the motherfucking spit on Liddy's face? And Liddy's sitting there walking around the room mad. wanting She too worried about fighting Fly Nye. That she ain't even got the spit off her motherfucking face. I'm like, Liddy, what are you doing, sis? Wipe that nasty shit off. Which we do see her wipe it with her hand. I'm like, oh my god. Oh. Oh, my God. And on top of this, y'all, I'm eating as I'm watching this. Y'all are very welcome. <laughs> I'm watching this shit for y'all. Bitch, I'm eating as I'm watching this shit. Appalled. Spit running down her motherfucking face. Bitch, if you spit on me, I'm going to jail. No questions asked, okay? I'm going to motherfucking jail. 
If you spit on me, bitch, it's over. K.O. on your ass. Lights out. It's a wrap. Exit. Stage left. <laughs> Call my motherfucking attorney, ho. Now, Cash is upset because it's somebody has stole her weed. Right? Now, where are my pot smokers at? I need all my pot smokers in the building to come to the front. for Come to the front of the stage right down here for a minute. Because I know y'all can relate. So we can talk, okay? I ain't got no bud on me, but I do got my little pen. And I know I know how I feel when I lose this little pen. Um, and Cash is, you know, she's, 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 she's getting more and more mad. She's, she's on 10. And I don't blame her for being on 10 because, bitch, that's my medicine. You know, that, I mean, that is some people's medicine. Seriously, some people think it's all about getting high. Like, for me, when I wake up, because I eat a lot of junk food at night and in my sleep. I, I, I have a very poor diet, I admit, and I'm working on it. But I'll wake up and just be nauseous sometimes. And, like, the only thing that makes me feel better is just, like, a, a couple of hits off this and I'm ready to start my motherfucking day. You know what I'm saying? So... I understand, like, and then I'm living in a house full of hoes that feel like I'm at a psych ward or a prison. Yeah, I really need my weed. Um, so I don't blame her. You just can't be stealing folks' medicine and shit now. So somebody has stole it. I mean, too many people's shit is coming up missing at this point. I mean, it's it, it's crazy. And while Cash is looking for her weed, here come Big Hill Billy Barbie. Her overgrown ass walks in the room going like King Kong trying to fight, you know, literally. When she fights, she reminds me of motherfucking King Kong. The way she did cash, bitch. Just like Ivory remind me of King Kong, too. I think I call Ivory King Kong because they be like, their, their punches are lethal, okay? Um, but here come Billy's overgrown ass trying to fight. And, and I talk, I told you, I knew there was a reason I liked Monet. Because Monet was like, yo, can, can we like, can we wait? It's too early in the morning for that. Please, Billy, stop, stop. Like, she checked Billy and told Billy, like, and she did it on some grown woman shit. Like, she could have been an asshole and a bitch and been like, you know, get the fuck out of me, whatever. But she was just like, yo, can we, can we not do this right now? It's too early. Can we wait and do it later? Please, Billy. Like, please. And I, like, 100% agree. Because, you know, they trying to roll a blunt. We trying to chill. Like, bitch, I don't want to fight 24 motherfucking 7. Who wants to live like that? Like, no. Like, what are we doing? And we y'all saw Hillbilly Barbie turn around and left. Right? And I feel like, who who are you, Billy? Like, we that's the one thing about this show. We don't really get to know these girls. But I, I do feel like I've gotten to know a little bit of Cash, a little bit of Monet, a little bit of Ivory, each of these girls. But, Billy, I don't know you. Like, I literally, the only thing I know about Billy is that she's a big-ass bully in a pink Halloween Express wig. That's what I know about Billy. Like, show me more than that, okay, sis? Because you're not giving nothing at this point. So Billy is pissed that she can't get to cash, right? She can't get to cash at this point. She's trying her hardest to. Security won't let her in. The door is locked. So she tries to get Nina riled up and get Nina involved. And she tells N Nina's, you know, Nina walks in the room and she's wiping the sleep out of her eye because she just woke up. So Billy tells Nina, you know, that bitch said, uh, what did she say? That bitch said she wants her ones with you. So Nina, of course, is like, who? So, you know, Billy, Billy, you know, sets her up for the play because Nina's that vulnerable. Um, and, you know, I guess Nina looking for a fight. Just woke up. She ready. Camera's on. Let me get my clout. So Billy gets her stirred up, gets her cranked up. And Nina's trying to pick the lock to get in the room where Cash, Knuckles, I think it was Bree, uh, and a few others are in there, right? But they can't, they can't get the lock picked. They can't get in there. So Fly Nye gives it a try. Fly Nye gets over there and starts twisting. And when Fly Nye opens that door, bitch, you would have thought they opened a motherfucking gate and a bull ran out that motherfucker. The way Hillbilly Barbie ran at Cash in that motherfucking room, bitch. Do y'all know how traumatizing? I see why Cash was crying, picking up shit, like so 
furious. I see why, because do y'all know how traumatizing? I would relive that shit in my head over and over again, because that would be like a nightmare. Looking up and you got a bitch like Hillbilly Barbie. Looking like she's straight out the motherfucking rodeo, ho. Coming at you like... Hooves running at you. And then takes all her weight, jumps on top of you. Can we talk about... Bitch, let me tell y'all. I'm sorry I'm going to keep saying the B word, but I feel like I'm talking to one of my girlfriends. <laughs> y'all, in all the Ratchet reality TV we've watched and we've recapped over here, baddies, bad boys, now that's TV, South Central, Younger, all that shit. All of these shows, I have never seen someone beat someone's ass the way Hillbilly Barbie beat Cashmere's ass in that room. I mean, I got I I, I can't stand Hillbilly Barbie, but I gotta give it to her. I mean, she had she snuck her though. I I I I'm taking it back. I can't give it to Hillbilly Barbie because she snuck her. It wasn't a fair fight. It wasn't a fair fight. But she did beat Cashmere's ass, and nobody can deny that. Nobody can deny that. The way she ran up in there with that peak Halloween Express Party City wig for, oh my God. It was given nightmare on Elm Street, ho. It was given nightmare in South Central. That was an asshole. I felt bad for Cash. I'm not going to lie to y'all. And I know a lot of people don't like Cash. I don't know her history. I don't know her past, her beats, what she's done to other. I don't know. I'm just looking at her as a human at this point, And I hate to, to see Billy give her a hillbilly beatdown because that's what she did. And then two other girls got to scrapping in there. And I'm like, who is that? I couldn't even tell who it was. I think it was Bree and Lexi. They got to scrapping so bad that one of them had a big ass black eye. And then did anybody notice? We got to talk about the little gay hairdresser boy that looks like a motherfucking bird. Ha hair green over here, black over here. We got to talk about him. Did anybody see as Bree and Lexi were fighting how he was on the motherfucking sidelines talking about beat that bitch up, Bree, on my soul, on my soul. See, I knew there was a reason I didn't like that messy punk. I knew it. Didn't I tell y'all? See, y'all got to start believing me. I'm a good judge of character from the motherfucking get go. I can, bitch, I can spot a messy punk from the mile away. I can spot a messy ass punk from a mile away. So there's a difference. I'm a punk. He's a punk. You got the gays and then you got the punks. You got the punks and you got the punks. That's a punk. Stay the fuck out these grown women's business. Little boy. I don't know what your name is. But stay the fuck out of these grown women's business and sit your little bird brain looking ass down somewhere. Go pick up a curling iron. Pick up a straightener, bitch. Pick up some hairspray. Be productive. Shit. Then you got Nina. You had Nina saying to one of the girls, did you say da 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 and the little hairdresser boy talking about, Nina, she didn't say nothing about you. She, are you a South Central baddie now, little boy? Little man, are you a South Central baddie now? Because you all up in the mix with the girls. I'm just confused. Like, he needs to go. He needs to go. He should have been gone episodes ago. That's the type of punk right there to make the rest of us look bad. And I hate to say that. This, I'm not trying to make it a them versus us or a, you know, um, you know, y'all know what I'm trying to say. Like, I'm not trying to do that. I, I'm really not. But that's why people have a bad reputation or have a bad. That's why gays have stereotypes and reputations of being messy punks because of messy punks like him. Always in some drama, always trying to stir up shit with, with women and shit like sit down. Now. Cash is throwing shit at Hillbilly Barbie at this point. 
she's so pissed, right? Cash is so pissed. She's throwing shit at Hillbilly Barbie. She even picks up a motherfucking 50 inch flat screen and goes after her. Not the 50 inch ro flat screen Roku, Cash. Not the Roku. Again, somebody ain't getting a deposit back for this house. <laughs> because, whoo, child. Somebody ain't getting a deposit back. Um. Now, the girls that were in that room when Hillbilly Barbie barged in, like Knuckles, like um, Brie or Lexi, I can't remember, I get them mixed up. Cash, all them, you know, they're talking about, um, they're fuming mad at this point. They're just really upset at what happened. I noticed them placing some blame on security and others, and I think um, from their perspective, it seems like they're upset with production because they think it was a setup. And I can 1,000% see why, from their point of view, it would look that way. You know what I'm saying? Because, you know, when they're always... If you notice throughout the show, they'll be like, why did you let her do that? Why did you let them do this? And they'll always be like, we didn't let them do nothing. We didn't let them do nothing. Now, I do believe that like 80 to 85% of the time, production doesn't tell the girls what to do or doesn't let them do anything. Um, but like in this instance, y'all did, it kind of was a setup with Barbie, run, uh, Hillbilly Barbie running in the room because if cameras are following and watching, what is that? Why did not, why did security not get in front of the door and tell them, no, y'all are not going in that room. Y'all let it happen. So I a hundred percent see why they're upset. I would feel pissed about it. Like, why are y'all letting them come in here, like barge in and sneak us like this? You know what I'm saying? Um, the situation could have been worse, too, if I'm being real with y'all. Because had it been me, and I'm just, like, I'm just sitting there chilling, and, like, they could have been doing each other's hair. Imagine if you should have been sitting there with a hot, a hot flat iron doing hair, and then I see a big bull with a pink wig run in. Bitch, I'm gonna take that flat iron, and I'm gonna wear that motherfucking ass out, right? That'll be your first instinct. If they're not attacking me, or they, or you see your friend being toppled on by somebody that's four times her size, are you gonna help your friend? We've been a well on that hoe. Um, now they got weapons in their hands at this point. Cash has a chair in her hand. One of them's got a curtain rod in their hand. I can't say I don't blame them. I mean, tensions are high. They're very high. Billy is literally like four of these girls in one. So. She's just a bully. She's a pure bully. Go pick on Lolly. Go pick on a girl of your stature and, and size. Why ain't why ain't you and Lolly had nothing out? Y'all ain't I mean, what what's what's the tea? Because I'm pretty sure none of y'all really know one another anyway. I mean, at this point, we see, you know, Cash, her eye, her, uh, her eye, I can't speak today. Her eye is the size of a motherfucking baseball. from what Billy did to her. And you know, I was talking about on my live the other day about how transphobia affects natural born women, even though a lot of people don't like to, to admit that. But Hillbilly Barbie is a perfect example of how transphobia can affect natural born women. Because if I was walking down the motherfucking street and I passed Hillbilly Barbie, I would think that that was a man in a pink wig not a transgender woman. I would think that that was a dude that woke up that day and went to Halloween Express and purchased a synthetic shiny pink wig and put it up on their head and started walking down the street. That's what I, and that's why I say transphobia affects natural born women because there are some fucked up men out there that are battling with their sexuality and other shit that would see someone like Hillbilly Barbie on the street and think that they're a natural born man trying to dress as a woman and would attack her now it might not go over well as we've seen what hillbilly barbie did to cashmere <laughs> but all jokes aside unalive her use a weapon against her you know what i'm y'all know what i'm saying not to go off on a transphobia ramp but i just i just had to put that out there because hillbilly barbie is given Medea. okay it's given how you do Now, we, did y'all see Billy even had a cat? She had a cast iron skillet or a waffle maker, something in her hand at one point. And I'm just like, child, I'm telling y'all, these Zeus, 
now that's TV shows, they ain't gonna be satisfied until somebody gets unalived. Until somebody loses it. You know what I'm saying? Like, I hate to say that, but it's gonna happen one of these days. Y'all, you can't, you can't continuously stick your, fa your finger near a fire and not get burnt. Okay. And before, listen, I'm about to wrap this video up. Can I complain about one more thing? Y'all know I complain about a lot of shit. I know. Can I complain about something else? Isaiah, his boyfriend, he's fine as wine, okay? Beautiful man. Handsome. Cute. I would love to stare at you. All day. Great eye candy. But I just don't understand why this entire season, Isaiah's boyfriend, we see him in the background. He's laying around on the bed. Like, him and the hairstylist, can they just both go? And Isaiah's man, do you not have a job? Like, what are you doing? You just laid up with your, while your man is working, watching the show? Like, it just don't make sense. Why? why? It's unprofessional. It looks tacky. It looks like it just don't look right. Like, get, like, get up. You just laying around watching everything go down. Get up. I, I, I don't get it. Better yet, can Isaiah, his boyfriend, and the hairstylist, all three of y'all need to go. Because at this point, the show needs to be called Chasing Clout. It's giving this season on Clout Chasers. Like, God, y'all go on South Central Playboys. Lead this to the girls. We watch for the girls. Not the girls. The girls. Okay? Like, come on now. Sorry, I had that mixed up. Girls and girls. <laughs> Y'all know what I mean. Okay, so then we see Cashmere arguing with Billy outside. They're on Cashmere is on the balcony. Billy Hillbilly Barbie is down here on the lower level on the ground. And they're arguing. And they're 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 just Cashmere, first of all, is just going too far. Right? She's going too far with things. And then Billy starts going too far. And I'm just like, come on, y'all. It's, it's, it's so dark and twisted at this point. This show has gotten so dark. <laughs> like, like Cash is calling Billy, like, all kinds of big, fat, ugly. I, I don't even, B-L-A-C-K. I don't even feel comfortable repeating it. Okay, the things they were really saying to each other, I don't even really feel comfortable repeating because those words are not in my vernacular. They're not words that I use every day, like I, I that I even use at all. Period. Um, it's just, it's just, it's just. I don't know. There's a lot of colorist colorism. There's a lot of colorism amongst this group of girls. Okay, um, and then Cash says, "F your mama," right? And Billy says, "F." your daughter, I will shit in her mouth. I feel like I need some holy water. I need the blood of Jesus. I need something to cleanse my soul after watching this episode. Because that's one sick, nasty, no good, grimy, two-timing, low-down, gutter-butt piece of shit. To say some shit like that, you are... It's gross. It's classless. It's coothless. It's gutter-butt behavior. Shout-out to Crimson Jim. Or Pegan, it's Pegan the Stallion. One of y'all. Shout-out to y'all. I was appalled. Bitch, I was motherfucking appalled. I clutched my white woman pearls. Well, and, and Cash, you too, because Cash repeated it. And I think Cash just repeated it because she was so pissed, but it doesn't make it right. Like, who says that? You would S-H-I-T in a child's mouth? Y'all are just disgusting. Like, God damn, I wish you say that about my child so I can jump off this balcony, ho. But at the end of the day, all things aside, Billy definitely beat Cash's ass. Stevie Wonder could see that Billy won that round, even though she snuck Cash. She should be disqualified completely for sneaking her. When I say disqualified, I don't mean like leave the show. I think she should, we shouldn't just give it to anybody because she snuck her. But then again, they all be sneaking one another. 
Um, I'm more scared of Hillbilly Barbie than I am Ivory. I didn't think anybody could really get no worse than Ivory, but Hillbilly Barbie, that bitch looked like a, like, her fights look like a death wish. Yeah. And, and can we get a GoFundMe started for these security guards? So when they come off the show to cover their therapy, <laughs> because after the show, I'm sure they're going to have PTSD, bitch. I am sure. I'm sure of it. Because this, this this show is everything I imagine prison being like. <laughs> I really do. Oh my God, y'all. We're at 40 minutes. And y'all know I like to keep it around 30 minutes. So we're going to wrap this shit up. But I would love to hear from you on what you thought of this episode. So please, get in the comment section and let me know what you thought about what went on on this crazy ass episode, okay? I would love to hear from you. And also let me know whose side are you on when it comes between cash and and hillbilly barbie let me know in the comment section don't forget to subscribe to the channel and turn on your post notifications click the thumbs up button right below this video if you don't mind and like the video that helps me get into the algorithm so more beautiful people like yourself can find me here if you want to donate to the damien after dark movement and help with lights and microphones and new cameras and all that good shit in the description box below will be ways that you can donate using PayPal, Cash App, Venmo, or Zelle. I will also post my Amazon wish list there for those that choose to take that route. Stay tuned for the Young and Reckless after show coming soon. And make sure you tune in to the Baddies East after show live each and every Sunday night at 9 to 9.30 Central, only on Damien After Dark. I love you so much for watching, and we'll see you next time.